All right, we're starting uh, triple integrals here in spherical and cylindrical coordinates. So uh, first thing I want to talk about here is what are cylindrical coordinates. Uh, essentially, they are polar coordinates, but with a Z axis value. So you have this R and theta, just like in polar coordinates. And so you do the same thing. You have some polar coordinate here, right, where you go around, you have some radius you come out and some angle theta from the x-axis like that. Uh, but then we're just adding in the extra point where after you do that and you get to this point, you're gonna move up. We're gonna add that z direction in and you're gonna move up to some z amount right there. And what this essentially does is has the, the effect of taking you around to different points on different size cylinders. Uh, so that's essentially what you're looking for. It's just kind of drawing you around on cylinders when you do this. And so it's called cylindrical. Um, and so it's just z-axis is acts just the same as the old rectangular z-axis. Uh, so again, it's just r and theta and then expand it straight up in the z direction to get to any point in three three dimensional space uh, that you want to. Uh, here you can see it, uh, kind of what I was just drawing where the xy plane would have been just the polar coordinates and then you just move up a z amount. And you can see how you can get to any point you want. You just come around to some angle theta, you go out some distance r, and then you just move up straight in the z direction. And that wasn't a very good example. You move around some angle theta, go out some distance r, right? And then you go straight up some distance z, and you can get to any point you want. That was a better one. My z and r don't look identical. Okay, and so that's basically uh, just the idea there. Here are the equations that relate them. Uh, they're the same as they are for polar coordinates. X equals R cosine theta, Y equals R sine theta, and then Z is just Z. Uh, and then of course, R squared is X squared plus Y squared and tangent of theta is Y over X. So like I said, they're the same as they are for uh, polar coordinates. We just have this extra part that Z is Z. So there's no, con no conversion you have to do for Z. So pretty simple coordinate system. Um, here you can see that as you move around on these things, again, they're just showing you uh, what happens. Uh, theta defines, as you go through all the thetas, defines out essentially a uh, plane that has that, that goes around in that z-axis. Um, the different radii then give you a cylinder, and then the z-axis can give you some sort of plane that's at that angle. And so those are the three things you have. You have that intersection of all those things, like a cylindrical sleeve and those two, um, and those two uh, planes like that. So here, this is our little uh, volume element inside of here, uh, which, I mean, you can see in their picture, it's kind of like what I talked about before, but you're going out in polar coordinates where you have a, you know, you have some little slice you're doing you have a little dr, right, as that. Then you have an r d theta for your rotation. And then as far as, you know, as far, and then that starts to, that gives you a little area element. And then you do a step up vertically in the z direction, right? And you get a dz like that. And that builds you a, you know, a little, volume cube right there that you have inside there. So it's R, D, Z, D, R, D, theta, like that. And so they have it as D, Z, R, D, R, theta, but that shouldn't matter because, uh, you know, your function, you can do that the integration with Z. So you should be able to write just R, D, Z, D, R, D, theta. But that's basically the order you want to do them in uh, for these problems as we go through. Okay, so how do we integrate? First, you sketch your graph, just like we were doing before with the other three-dimensional ones and the two-dimensional ones. Uh, you find the Z limits by looking for when does it enter and exit through what functions typically of R and theta. And then you find the R limits to see where when you project it over and you get rid of Z, where does the, what are the limits of the radius? And then you look for the limits of the angle that you go through as well. Uh, so after the first one, it turns into just doing the same sort of double integral in polar coordinates that we did before. So you can see here, you look and see where it enters the function, where it exits the function to get your limits for z. 
uh, then you look to see <clears throat> where does it enter and exit the projection down into the XY plane for R. And then you look to see here, you know, what angles are you actually going through uh, to cover your object like that? And that's going to be your limits for R. Okay, so here is an example uh, that we can see here. It says find the limits of integration on the cylindrical coordinates for integration, integrating a function f of r theta z over the region d bounded below by, uh, bounded below by the plane z equals zero, laterally by the circle cylinder uh, x squared plus y minus one squared equals one and above by the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pause this for a moment and give you a chance to try and see if you can come up with the limits of integration there for it um, and before I actually go through and do it. All right, for this one, what we're first interested in is our limits on Z. Uh, if we come up in a vertical line here, we're gonna enter at the plane Z equals zero. So for Z, we're starting at zero when Z equals zero, and then we're going up through the top here, which is where we're going to exit through that paraboloid right there, which has the equation uh, x squared plus y squared uh, equals z. And so we can't leave it as x squared plus y squared equals z. So what you would do is substitute this out. x squared is going to be r squared cosine theta plus r or cosine squared plus r squared sine squared theta. And so then that the cosine squared and the sine squared, you can factor that, factor out the r squared and you get cosine squared, sine squared is one, and you end up with just r squared. So we're gonna go up to r squared on that axis. Uh, after that, we wanna look at what we're doing for, so that's dz, and then we wanna look at what we're doing for r, going over r. You can see that we are entering here and exiting over here as we go out, that means we're basically going from zero, which is right here at the origin, zero, and then we're going out to our function there. And our function for that, whenever we have, uh, we're, we're bounded by this, this cylinder, cylinder here, which if you go through and you do the same kind of substitution that I just did, but you do it with, you know, in that, you'll actually end up getting that two sine theta right there, which was already done for you. But you can go through and try that substitution, r, r sine theta and r cosine theta in there. But you end up with two sine theta, and that's gonna be our bounds for dr. And then our last one is d theta. Uh, if you look here, we, I know it, this one's a little tricky, but if you kind of like zoom way in, you know, this is this this circle thing here. We're starting at a theta here and we're rotating all the way around a full pi, right? So halfway around because we're rotating along here to be in the positive y axis right there is where this all takes place. Uh, so we're not bound to something less than that. Like if this if this circle was moved out here, we could be bound to a smaller theta but we're not because it comes all the way back over to uh, the all the way back over to the origin there to zero. So we're actually going zero to pi on d theta. So for d theta, it's simply zero to pi. And that's it. That's the limits of integration that you would use to do here. All right, so let me pause and check for any questions. All right, if we take a look at this one, I did part A for you. It says, let D be the region bounded below by the plane uh, Z equals zero. So that's the X, Y plane. Above by the sphere, X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals four. And on the sides by the cylinder, X squared plus Y squared equals one. All right, where Z can be anything. So that gives us a cylinder. And it says, set up triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates in these different orders. So I did the first one, which was dz, dr, d theta. Um, and then I want you to try and do the other ones. And you can see I tried to draw here in this first picture. Um, I did the blue, that's the z equals zero plane. I know it's kind of tough to see there. Um, and then I did in this kind of gold yellow color, I did the sphere that's centered at the origin. And then I did x squared plus y squared, that's that cylinder. So the cylinder goes up and down. When you overlap them, 
you get this picture here. So you basically get like, maybe it's like a silo. It's a cylinder, it's flat on the bottom, but then you have that dome shape on the top that's part of that sphere. You have that spherical dome shape on the top and then the flat sides for the cylinder. And so this is what you're actually doing. Uh, to get my integration for Z, I simply went from Z equals zero right here up through till I left that sphere, which is the X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals four. Um, so it has a radius of two. And I solved that for Z right like that. And then I substituted the minus X squared minus Y squared is actually just minus R squared. So this is what my Z version was, and that's what I'm going to integrate through. So from zero to the square root of four minus R squared on the Z axis. And then for R, we're just going out to R equals two, because like we said, uh, this cylinder also, if we look at the cylinder, um, wait a second, my cylinder should be a one. Maybe I messed that up. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. I thought the cylinder had a radius of two. I was looking at that. So that should only go out to a radius of one. Oops. That should be a one. Sorry. Uh, the cylinder has a radius of one, not two. I guess I was thinking of the, the, the radius of the sphere still when I wrote that. So that should go zero to one for R, because that's as far as we go out. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. that's yeah, that's right. Zero to one. That should be it. And then, uh, and then as far as theta goes, we're just going all the way around a full two pi. Uh, so if you want to uh, go ahead and give that one a try uh, to do the to do the other ones here, um, and and then you should be able to get it done. So just zero to one. Sorry, I wrote that zero to two. But anyway, try doing at least doing B here. Uh, and then maybe we'll move on and just leave you to do the other one later. But I guess we're not in too much of a rush. So start giving those a try. All right. All right. So moving on here, uh, we're going to look at spherical coordinates. So again, this kind of starts where we have the same R and theta, kind of. We have an R and theta for, uh, for like a polar coordinate version, but then we have to rotate up um, to a different overall radius, which we're calling rho. And that's the distance from the origin out to our point, um, not just in the x, y plane like it was in the cylindrical coordinate. So this one's a little bit trickier. Uh, but basically, we have a, a, a radius and then two angles in order to draw out different spheres. Uh, take note that phi, this middle one, we're only going from 0 to pi. Uh, I talked about that before, because if we went 0 to 2 pi, for both phi and theta, we'd actually end up counting everything twice. All right, so let's keep that in mind. So here's what we have. Here's our picture of it. Uh, we can see that uh, phi is measured down from the z-axis, the azimuthal angle it's called. Uh, then we have x uh, or theta that's measured around from the x-axis in the positive direction there. And then of course, this row right here is our is our radius, it's our how far we're pointing out from the origin. Don't confuse that with the R. They've left the R in here that goes with the cylindrical or, or the cylindrical or spherical coordinate version, uh, but it is not the same as the row here that's our distance from the origin. It's a projection of that distance down into the XY plane, so it's actually shorter. Uh, if we draw this out, uh, you can see here that we have this right triangle if I flip that right triangle over into this right triangle, uh, it becomes pretty simple to see that this up here is still R and the sine of phi is R over rho, which is what I wrote right here. It's R over rho, it's the sine of that angle. And that tells us then that R is equal to rho sine phi. Uh, so that tells us that's what R is, rho sine phi. So there's our, our little uh, conversion right there for it. Uh, and then of course, over here, uh, we would get then we'd get the, the, the Z version, this Z value here, right? It's the same as this. This and this are the same. Uh, those you do the same thing, but with cosine and you get that Z equals rho cosine of phi. 
And so that tells us uh, how we can start doing our, our little transitions here. So what does this draw out? Well, phi draws out a cone. Uh, R, the radius is gonna draw a sphere as we go through everything else. And then uh, theta is gonna give us just a single half plane. Uh, notice it's only gonna be a half plane because phi only traces around as we, in other words, we hold theta constant and as we trace out every value of R and every value of phi, that's only gonna get us the zero to two pi for phi. So we only get a half plane there. But the intersection of all these things together will give us a single coordinate where all three uh, meet up together. You'd get one single point where the sphere and everything meet up, like that's where the sphere and everything would meet up. We'd have one single point. All right, uh, here are our conversions. R is rho sine theta, Z is rho cosine phi. I said theta, R is rho sine phi, Z is rho cosine phi. Uh, if you then take that X equals R cosine theta and substitute out rho sine phi, you can get straight from X to rho and X is rho sine phi cosine theta. And then do the same thing here, substitute out for this R right here and you know, that was just our old uh, uh, polar coordinate transformation. You substitute that out and you get that Y is rho sine phi sine theta. And then of course, rho itself, we have X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. Well, X squared plus Y squared is just that. And we can get it as R squared plus Z squared. So there's a relationship between all the variables. So if you have uh, your equations given to you in Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, you can actually go through and do these transformations to put it back into that. Uh, so taking a look here, uh, we can see that we've got a spherical coordinate equation that should be x squared plus y squared plus z minus one squared equals one. All right, so it should be it's this up here. I don't, I still don't know why all these exponents are in the inside of there are not working, uh, but basically. Uh, that's what we have right there. So if we wanted to go through and find a spherical coordinate for this equation, uh, that's basically what we would start to do. So I started this off here for you. I made these substitutions in, as you can see right there. Uh, what I'd like to do is take a quick moment to pause this and let you uh, try going through and uh, finishing that off into, you know, reduce it down and get this thing going. You should end up with this right there, rho equals two cosine phi. So let me pause here and give you a minute to try that. All right, so after making my substitutions there, I can pretty much just see right here, I've got a cosine squared and a sine squared, and then the value out in front is rho squared sine phi squared for both of them. So if I factor the rho squared sine phi squared out, I have a cosine squared plus sine squared. So that just leaves me with a rho squared sine squared phi. Uh, for this over here, when you expand it out, you get a rho squared cosine of phi squared. And then uh, with that, you get the two, so minus two rho cosine Phi. Oh, I picked a bad color for going over top of there. So minus two rho cosine phi like that. And then of course, negative one times negative one is a plus one. Uh, you see here, I have another sine squared and cosine squared with a rho squared out in front. So if I factor out the rho squared, I have cosine squared plus sine squared, that's just one. So I end up with rho squared minus two rho cosine phi. Uh, and this equals one. So I can actually go ahead and just cancel out these ones like that. And this will equal zero. So rho squared equal, well, I guess I don't need to write the squared. So rho is just gonna equal the square root of, uh, of two rho cosine phi like that. And is this, I guess, did you do like a plus or minus on this, I guess, uh, to get that, but anyway, uh, oh no, I didn't do that. Why am I doing the square root? What am I doing? That's crazy. I'm writing this out totally wrong. 
I have a two row cosine phi, and then this was row squared, so those canceled. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what I was thinking. Cosine phi, just like that. And there's where you have it. So uh, I was still looking, I guess, for that where you got the zero. Anyway, there's that. So let me pause and check for any questions. All right, let's go ahead and finish this up then. Uh, here is another one that you can go through and try to uh, state this one in uh, spherical right here. Go ahead and go through and do that conversion. Uh, if you want, go take a look back at the notes and I'll, I'll have done it out for you, but you can, you can look at it and see. Uh, next after this is how do we actually integrate inside of this? And the basic idea is you're gonna sketch your region so you can see, actually see it and figure out uh, you know, when you're entering and exiting different parts of it. You're gonna find the uh, limits for rho, and then you're gonna find the limits for phi, and then the limits for theta for integration and do all three. And then it's just a matter of evaluating it. And so you're doing the same sort of thing. You're looking at when do you enter for rho and when do you exit? Then you're looking at what value for phi that you actually go through and what values for theta you're actually rotating through uh, in order to do it. And so you can see that here, entering and exiting for rho, you're going through here for phi and then rotating around here for theta. And so then that gets you your rho, phi and theta integration right there. Uh, here you can see a volume element of it. Uh, of course, uh, a change in rho is just d rho. A change in phi, uh, on the other hand, as we rotate through that is actually going to end up being a r times phi or a rho times phi because we're rotating through this and it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's an arc length. And then a rotation around in theta, though, is not on the full circle anymore. It's actually a rotation on a smaller circle. So you have to take a component of it, which gets you that sine phi that's right there. I did this before. I talked about it a previous day, so I'm not going uh, too crazy on it here. But you end up with rho squared, sine phi, uh, d rho, d phi, d theta. That's your volume element for this. Uh, here is an example of finding the volume of this ice cream cone. Uh, I went ahead and set up the integral and leave it for you to try. It's not a very complicated integral. Uh, so you go ahead and go through and do it. But what you can see is you're entering into row here at zero, and then you're coming up and you're exiting on the surface of that sphere. And no matter where you do that, uh, that's where you're exiting out the surface of this sphere like that. So even along this edge, it's when you reach that edge, you're at the surface of that sphere. Uh, so that gives us uh, what we're integrating over for rho is just zero out to one because the sphere is rho equals one. All right, the solid sphere is rho is less than or equal to one. So it exited at rho equals one. Uh, they didn't tell us the cone is just phi equals pi over three. So that's pretty easy. We're going from zero out to pi over three. And then this needs to make a cone. So in order to make this full cone, we need to rotate theta all the way around a full two pi. So we're going from zero to two pi on theta. And that gives us then this ice cream cone shape that you can go through and integrate and get the volume of. So I'll leave it for you to try doing that actual integral, but there it is set up for you. Uh, after this, here we have our conversions from rectangular uh, to uh, cylindrical and uh, we have cylindrical, we have two rectangular, we have spherical to rectangular and spherical to cylindrical. So these are your transformations you can do all in one to go through and do them. Uh, and then of course, all your volume elements here is, you know, here's rectangular, here's cylindrical and here's spherical right there. So sphere, I could write. So spherical, cylindrical, rectangular. So this is just a summation of everything that we've done so far. Uh, and you can see all your conversions that you need to do to, uh, to change those over from one to the other. All right, uh, here is the, uh, I think this is our last, last little example, yeah. So take a look here, it says uh, you have a volume uh, of solid enclosed by a cone, z equals x squared plus y squared, and between the planes, z equals one and z equals two. So I'm gonna leave this for you to try 
And uh, when after you're done trying it, you can take a look in the notes and I'll have worked it out for you uh, to see how you did on it, okay? So come back, take a look at this one and see if you were able to get it right. So anyway, that's it for now.